Now a look at one organization's holistic approach to healing the wounds of war. Special correspondent Fred the Sam Lazaro reports from Goma in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Of Congo. A version of this segment aired on PBS's Religion and Ethics Newsweekly. The United Nations says the Democratic Republic of Congo is the worst place on earth to be a woman. For two decades, regional militias have clashed over the minerals here. One of the weapons of war, rape, continues despite peace agreements and elections. By one estimate, more than a thousand women are assaulted every day. By another, the problem has hit some 12 percent of Congolese women. One of the few places women can turn is Heal Africa in the eastern city of Goma. Here, women work to shake off atrocities they have faced to deal with their traumatic injuries. This woman wears a mask to conceal her maiming at the hands of militiamen who raided her home one night in 2010. My older daughter escaped from them. They told me to go get her, and I said, she'd escaped from you, how could I ever catch her? Since I wouldn't give them my daughter, they hit me in the head with a machete, and after I fell down, they used that same machete to cut off my lips. A volunteer health worker brought her here. Heal Africa was started 12 years ago by British-born Lynn Lucy and her Congolese husband, Dr. Joe Lucy, devout Christians who'd served for years before that as medical missionaries. HEAL is an acronym. It stands for Health, Education, Action in the Community, and Leadership Development. And all of those are components of a healthy society. The facilities are Spartan, but they offer the only such services to a population of 8 million. HEAL Africa survives on about $13 million a year in grants from abroad, public and private providing everything from antiretroviral drugs to hundreds of children with HIV to surgery to repair the bodies of traumatized women. Dr. Joe Lucy is the only orthopedic surgeon in Eastern Congo, but he says this work is part of a larger idea. When you serve a human, I don't see you here like a human. I see you like an image of God. So to do that, you have to be holistic. You have to be total. You have to know what about the spirit, about the flesh, about the soul. Here, people are lacking everything. They don't have food, absolute poverty. They are exploited. They are perishing because of the lack of knowledge. They are perishing because of the lack of justice. So me and my wife said, OK, how do you do a holistic system Heal Africa has trained 30 young Congolese doctors and many other health workers. But the Lucys say their holistic approach goes well beyond surgery to help rebuild women's lives. <laughs> At this shelter, women spend months, even years, recovering from rape injuries. They're taught to sew, make baskets, and raise small animals. Basenia Bandora even allows herself to dream. I want to have a little shop and I will make bread and sit there with my sewing machine and people will bring me things to sew. I will make baskets. If I can have a little house, that would be very nice. For now, for practical purposes, such dreams are pure fantasy. These women have lingering health problems and militiamen continue to raid villages with impunity. Annunciata frequently sees the men who maimed her but reacted viscerally to a suggestion she might report them to the police. I'm terrified. They would kill me. Only God can punish them for what they did. But Heal Africa has begun working to bring a more immediate justice for victims of rape. In partnership with the American Bar Association, local lawyers work to apprehend suspects and put them through the legal system here. It is flawed and corrupt, but Lynn Lucy says only when Congolese begin to buy into it will it begin to work for them. I would always encourage our legal aid to work ten times more on the issue of bringing the community in line with the law so that they appreciate what the law is trying to do and, and that they agree with it. And then there's social pressure, there's a, there's a desire within the community 
for zero tolerance of sexual violence, of any sort of violence. That's what brought this 15-year-old girl and her father to the legal clinic to bring charges against a young man who raped her while she went to collect water for the family. I want him not only to be put in prison, but also to pay for the damages he caused. Last year, I turned 75 years old. When we were growing up, we never saw this kind of behavior. When you liked a girl, we would get married. I'm really astonished. I'm not sure what's going on, how they can take little girls and assault them. Lynn Lucy thinks it's a consequence of fighting that has raged for two decades in eastern Congo, destroying any sense of community. You have seen your village destroyed, you've seen your, your people killed, and you're a, a young man with no future. I mean, you have every reason to fight, have every reason to go off and join the militias. There are also those militias that will kidnap children and take them into their armies um, just to reinforce their ranks. Children are extremely good soldiers in that they have no fear and they have no conscience. Where does one begin to repair this? The Lucys say they've worked to tap the enduring faith of most Congolese. Here is a mandate to care that's in the Muslim community, that's in the Christian community, and it's present in every single locality in Congo. You could say that probably 95% of Congolese will go to a place of worship once a month at least. So this is an, an amazing power within the community. And if we knew how to mobilize people correctly around their mandate to care, then you can make a big impact on, on a social problem. Heal Africa has gathered religious leaders and other elders into so-called Nehemiah committees. <laughs> These gatherings address sources of violence early on, mediating local business disputes or competing land claims before they escalate. Lynn Lucy says it's a start. I have no illusions that we're dealing with the major issues that are pulling Congo apart. There is so much evil and so much cruelty so much selfishness and uh, it, it is like darkness. But if we can bring in some light, the darkness will not overcome the light. And that's where faith is, we believe that. I don't think Heal Africa is going to empty the ocean. But we can take out a bucket full here and a bucket full there. Her efforts received a hefty boost recently when Lucy was awarded the 2011 Opus Prize, a $1 million award given by the Minnesota-based Opus Foundation to a faith-driven social entrepreneur. Fred's reporting is a partnership with the Undertold Stories Project at St. Mary's University in Minnesota.